How are y'all? Woo! Can y'all hear that? All right, Brother Cliff, turn this down a little bit out here. Just a little bit. There you go. Now, is that any better? Okay, well, praise the Lord. Y'all didn't want to hear me anyway, did you? Amen. So, well, thank y'all. Uh, we, are, we are doing some construction work in there, so uh, uh, I told them to continue on so that uh, that way I can preach to them because they can hear me, you know, uh, while they're here. So uh, it's an outreach thing. So you just do what you got to do, you know. Uh, but what a what a blessing! So thank y'all for being here tonight, uh, and uh, I appreciate what the Lord's doing, and uh, thank God for His blessings. Uh, let's do. Uh, uh, we want to pray tonight for uh, uh, Tracy uh, and uh, uh, and John Smith, uh, their little boy Tanum. He was at the hospital last night, uh, and now they've, they've took him back, and they're going to admit him to the hospital at uh, Charlotte, uh, and, and, and on their way uh, to one of the doctor's visits today, trying to get some help, uh, a vehicle hit them and totaled their car, uh, so uh, uh, just a lot going on, so uh, just pray for them, uh, the Lord just uh, uh, help them and lift them up, so uh, please remember them in prayer. Uh, remember also, uh, Brother Donnie Jenkins, pray for him and his family. Uh, Delilah passed away late on uh, Sunday night. Uh, that funeral's going to be here at the church on uh, Saturday afternoon at 2. So uh, please pray for them. Lord, just lift them up and uh, God just meet their needs and give them, uh, give them comfort and peace. Uh, and, and the Lord just encourage their hearts uh, in, in a special way. Uh, and uh, we, we, got, we got all kind of kids. They're, go, they're going right out that way. Right. Okay. So uh, we're, we're trying. We're, we're going in all, all all directions. Okay. So uh, tonight. So uh, thank you uh, uh, and uh, pray pray for all these volunteers that they don't quit tonight. Okay. Uh, we are. Uh, this is not. Uh, this is not Sunday school. It's not Awanas. It's not missions. Uh, we are trying to just come together. Figure out uh, where our kids are and how many we have so that we can kind of divide them up uh, and uh, before we kind of get back into full mode of, of trying to fill every spot. So uh, uh, if you would like to volunteer, uh, please let us know. Uh, after you're hearing them come in, you might have already quit. But... Uh, uh, but uh, if you'd like to volunteer, let us know. Uh, we're going to try to do it on Wednesdays at this point. It's a, it's a great time because they don't go to school on Wednesdays, so that helps out. And we, we just have people drive by the stop sign, let their young'uns out, and keep on going. We don't know what's going on. But, uh, uh, whew, that got hot, didn't it? Can y'all hear that? All right, turn it down just a little bit right there, Cliff. All right. Uh, but uh, please pray for them and uh, pray for our service on Sunday. Uh, and continue to invite people, uh, Lord willing, uh, you know, unless, unless something changes. Uh, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to, I want to try to conclude the, uh, uh, the series we've been doing on uh, uh, about a detour or a diversion. And if you know anybody that don't know Jesus, uh, I want you to invite them somehow. I know people's going in all kinds of different directions, but bring them to church, get them online somewhere. If you got people online, we, we're, we're live now. So if you got people watching online, hey, tell them, say, hey, let me know you're online. Text them, say, are you online? All that kind of stuff. It, and, and that interactive lets people know, hey, you're here. And uh, what, what a blessing. So, uh, uh, so please invite people and be praying. And uh, let's trust the Lord together. Uh, anybody else got a, a special prayer request before we before we begin tonight and pray. So, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Okay, sister. Okay. All right. Pray for these children. All right, sister. Okay, all right. Okay, and let's pray for our whole county. Go ahead, sister. Oh, yeah. All right, I understand, sister. Bless your heart. Okay, all right. Let's pray for all of our nurses and doctors, all of our health care workers, uh, and uh, uh, continue to pray for them and uh, pray for our country. We need a touch from the Lord. Amen. God to help us, and uh, uh, Lord, just work in people's lives. But it's the greatest time on earth for every believer. 
We're getting ready to leave here, and we're the ones that have hope. So we can tell other people, amen, what a blessing. So, all right, well, let's pray together. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the word of God. Father, we're here tonight to hear from you. Lord, you know what you want to say to us. God, you know how you want to speak to us. And Lord, I ask you to prepare our hearts right now, God, to hear what you want to say. God, I want to thank you for the grace of God. Thank you for the blood that you shed on the cross, God, to give us life. And Father, we just ask you, Lord, to surround us at this time, Lord. God, all these prayer objects, Lord, we just want to pray, uh, God, right now, Lord, for uh, Tracy and John. God, I pray for them, Lord, Tatum. Uh, Lord, you would touch him there at the hospital. God, give the doctors wisdom. Lord, we ask you most of all, God, right now, just to do a miracle in his life. God, just touch his body with healing, Lord, as only you can do. And Father, God, I want to ask you right now, Lord, that you would just touch, uh, God, this uh, uh, one who's waiting to have a baby uh, that's sick, Lord, that you would just touch her and lift her up. Uh, God, we pray for Brian with, uh, uh, with COVID and pneumonia, God. You would just touch him and work in his life, Lord. Uh, God, in a miracle. Father, I pray, God, for him. Uh, Sister Tini, you bless her. Uh, God, give her wisdom, Lord, as she uh, she cares for these affairs, Lord, of her mom and dad. Uh, Lord, we pray, God, for Judy's children, Lord, that you would just open their eyes and heart, uh, God, to c- come to you, God, and believe in you and trust in you, Father. Lord, I pray, God, for every need right here, God, an unspoken request. Lord, you bless them. God, bless all of our children tonight, our children's classes, God, our teachers and helpers and workers. Lord, I pray, God, for an anointing upon them, God, tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray that your will be done, God, in and through our lives. Father, God, I pray for every church service going on tonight. You bless it. Lord, help us, oh God. Lord, we need you to speak to us tonight, God, and uh, reveal uh, where we are and what we need. And God, reveal our hearts, God, before you, that we might exalt you and lift you up. God, we just want to give you glory for what you're doing. Thank you for the cross. Lord, thank you for the blood. God, thank you for the power of the resurrection and the promise of your coming. Lord, I pray, God, that we just walk with you and serve you, be faithful to you in every area of our life. And we just want to give you thanksgiving and praise in the wonderful and holy and mighty name that is above every name the name of jesus god i pray your will be done we just give you glory tonight in jesus name amen amen hallelujah god's good amen i want to invite you to go ahead and take your bible and turn to the book of romans chapter number 10 romans chapter number 10 tonight as we uh, ask the lord to speak to us uh and uh, i appreciate you everyone being here what a blessing it is uh i guess you just uh, stuck the cell up and let it blow you on to the church amen uh uh and uh thank you so much for being here and uh, i want to encourage you invite some somebody to come uh join you in uh, worship and join you in the word of god uh and thankful for his word guess what the word of god works uh, there's many things in this life that don't work. Uh, there's many things in life that we're wondering, wow, where did this come from and what do we need to do with it? Uh, but I want to let you know something. The Word of God is real. The Word of God works. Uh, I watched today as uh, I saw a, a whole room full of teenagers uh, that, uh, had, had, uh, that I preached this morning uh, and watched, uh, I, I watched about three, four, or maybe even five or six that came uh, and got saved. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? Uh, I watched some of them get things right with the Lord. Uh, and uh, guess what? He's still on the throne. Amen. And uh, what a blessing. We praise God for it. As we look tonight at Romans uh, chapter number 10, we're going to look a little bit in chapter 10 and chapter uh, number 11. Uh, We've been talking about for uh, about 15 years. All the prayers of the Bible, amen. Uh, We've been looking at it for a long time. Uh, Matter of fact, we are getting close to the 300th message uh, on this. It's 294 prayers we've looked at. Uh, And and I want to tell you something. When you think about that, it's kind of uh, like, wow. Uh, Why don't the preacher find something else to preach? Or, wow, look what God has done. When you go in the Bible and you begin to see all the prayers that have happened, all the different places, prayers through the word, give us insight to the hand of God. God works on earth through the prayers of the people. He don't have to. That's the way God chose to. He chose for us to call on him, to trust him. And then we see his hand as he reaches through our life and reaches through that place of prayer and answers prayer. How many of you know that God answers prayer? Amen. Amen. You've personally had God to answer prayer. And and so when I think about all those prayers, God pinned it down through his word and said, I want you to know something. I can do great things through prayer. And so we're watching that that happen. He answered prayer. We see the effectiveness of prayer through the word. 
The Bible, in, this, in Romans chapter 10, it tells us one of the greatest verses about the Bible. It says, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by what? The Word of God. And so God let us see in the Bible where he answered so many, uh, so many prayers. So we followed all the way back with Adam, all the way through the saints uh, to where we are here in the book of Romans. We understand something. Prayer changes things or prayer changes you. Sometimes when we pray for God to change things, it's really us that needs to be changed to be able to walk with him where we are in those things. So watching God move through the pages of his word and across history, uh, we see the yes that he answers prayer. And so tonight, I, I want us to, we're going to look in verse number one of Romans chapter 10. I want you to see and think about this. Uh, this is a prayer for Israel to be saved. But when I look at verse number one, I want you to think about somebody in your life, a family member, a friend, a co-worker, somebody in your life that you desire to see get saved. We know people that need Jesus. Amen. I want you to look at it in verse number one. Uh, the Bible says, uh, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God. So what's he doing? He's praying prayer to God uh, for Israel is this. That they might be, what? Saved. God said in his word in the book of Peter, he said, It's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Everybody should be saved. And so we watch Paul. Man, we're, we're, we're hearing him. We see him. We, we understand that Paul is, is looking at these Romans. We, we need to understand something about the book of Romans. That is this. Romans were wicked people. Romans were in control of everything. Romans, uh, were, they, were, they were against the Jews. And what has happened? I, I, I dare, I, I go back to one instant. It happened at the cross of Jesus. There's a Roman soldier at the cross of Jesus who simply looks up and said, Truly, this is the Son of God. Can you imagine what could have happened through his life? We have the whole book of Romans. You have the Apostle Paul who is ministering to these people who are in control and over all these in Jerusalem, all these Jews. They, they are, they're the ones who is ruling them, but now God has set, begun to set them free, and we have the whole book of Romans. So he said, My prayer is that Israel will be saved. When I read verse number one, the first thing I see, and you can write this down. Put it in your heart, put it in your notes, is a burden. Paul had a burden for people to be saved. Man, you look at Paul's life. He said, what I do, he said, I'm driven by the love of God that's in my life. I'm driven by the compassion of Jesus that he saved me, and I want him to save other people. Can I say sometimes, and I know it's not been within the last uh, 11 months, but sometimes we get so busy doing things in church and ministry and trying to help people and, and trying to do all these other things that we forget that the main reason and the most important thing we can do is share Jesus with somebody because everybody needs Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so Paul has a burden in his life. Paul is writing to the Romans and he is expressing this one thing, a burden that is upon his heart. A burden is a heart's desire that weighs us down until it's lifted. A burden is like having your hands full and not being able to do anything else until you unload the burden that you're carrying or the weight that you're carrying. He says it like this in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12. He said to let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. That is a burden that's upon us. Unload that and follow Jesus. And then we find that Paul, there's a different kind of burden whenever you are saved. It is a load upon your life. It is something that is heavy on your heart. And that is what is going on with Paul. The burden has come from the future they have. We need to understand something. People are going to one of two places. It don't matter what they look like here. It don't matter what they act like here. It don't matter what kind of sin they're involved in while they're on earth. It's one of two places. We're all going to one of two places. 
The burden Paul had was because he knew his people were going to go to hell. And as Christians today, sometimes we forget we want people to straighten up their life. And man, you don't have to do drugs. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Those things don't have to be part of your life. We forget sometimes that we are maybe the only stop sign on their road to hell. And we're watching Paul as this burden is over him. Paul is teaching the Romans in chapter number 10. He's teaching them the foundation of becoming a believer while he is talking about his people. He said, I want you to know this is, I want them to be saved. I want them to know the Lord. So we watch Paul he, he, hear how he, he come. He teaches them that Jesus is the Savior of the world. How he came, that he died on the cross, that he was buried, and he rose again. Guess what? He rose again. We serve a risen Savior. And Paul said, I want everybody to know him. I want my, my burden on my heart is to know him. My heart's desire. What is that burden upon our heart today? He, we understand something that Paul did. I love how, how verse number one is. He said, brethren, he's talking to those who are born again, those who understand about being saved. He said, brethren, my heart's desire, that is his burden, that is what's waiting, uh, uh, waited upon his life. He said, is this, my heart's desire and prayer to God. I want to ask you something. How is Paul handling his burden? In prayer. He is taking this burden that's upon him. He is continually going to God. I want to tell you something. God does not ever get tired of you coming to him. It is the place where we take our burdens. It's the place where we come before him. It's the place where the Bible says in the book of, in the book of Peter, you hear, cast all my care upon him because he cares for me. That does not mean that my cares are over. That burden that I have, that burden for people to come to know Jesus, that burden to see somebody get saved, it is something that daily we go before God and we're saying, God, I want you to save this person. That is where Paul is. As you watch Paul before, uh, as he's speaking to these Romans and he's talking about his prayer, he handles his burdens with prayer. He said, my prayer to God is for Israel. Not one person. He's talking about all of Israel. Come to know Jesus. Is God big enough to save Israel? Paul is praying for all of Israel. God is big enough to save the people I'm praying for. He's big enough. Sometimes Satan tries to steal that away from us. Sometimes Satan says, hey, you need to quit praying for them. They're not ever going to change. Anybody ever had that before? Anybody ever, sometimes it's just us thinking, man, I don't see no change in them. And we kind of let them slide to the side. Paul said, my prayer is for Israel to come to know Jesus. It's for all to come to know him. The burden is that they would be saved. Wow. How, how long is it going to take for us as Christians in a world that is reeling and rocking and going in every direction to realize the greatest need people have is to be saved. The safest place people can be is in Jesus and being born again. And so Paul says in these verses of scripture, he said, my desire is that they would be saved. They're living in the blindness of their heart. The Bible says it like this in the book of Corinthians. He said, unto the God of this world, little g, the God of this world, have blinded their minds. How many of you believe today we are living in a world where the Bible talks about where the blind is leading the blind? Wow. I mean, it's like, talk about Jesus. And then, I mean, it goes off in so many different directions. Can I tell you, our world is blind to the gospel. They need somebody to lead them. I've told this story before, and it is, I mean, honestly, it, I can still see it in my mind. I remember it happening and, and hearing him talking about it. It hasn't been long since I've, since I've told the story, but uh, Brother Don Whaley, what a, he was such a blessing. He sang, he, sung, he preached. He could, you just lay an instrument in his lap. He played it. 
I mean, it'd be like, I mean, you, you, you give him a guitar and he'd lay it up. No, he'd just lay it down and just, I mean, I was thinking, how did that come out of that? But I remember as a blind man, he'd just catch a ride. Sometimes he caught rides with people. I don't, I don't even know if he even knew who they were. They'd just drop him out somewhere in a parking lot. He'd stand there until somebody come got him. You know what's happening in our world today? They're not waiting on somebody to come get them. They're just walking around blind. They're falling into every trap. And Satan is continuing to cover their minds and their hearts and blind them away from the real gospel. And so Paul said, there's not but one way where they're going to be reached. It is through a burden of those who are born again. It is through the prayer of those who know Jesus that we would have that burden in, in our life to see them reach. So that burden, it must be the motivation for us to reach others. I found out something. When I don't have a burden to reach lost people, I don't tell lost people about Jesus. When I'm not burdened about them not being in church or not being with the Lord, I usually don't say nothing to them. That's a good test in our life to see how much our burden is. That's a place we come back and say, oh God, I don't have what Paul had. God, I've let that slip out of my life. I've let other things cloud me. I've let other things get in the way of me understanding my real reason for living is that others can see Jesus in me. Why didn't we get, when we got saved, why didn't God just rapture us out and take us on home? That would have been wonderful, wouldn't it? He didn't. He left us here so that we could re help other people to come to know Jesus and to be a light to them. So when I think about that, we, we're, we're not going to reach others until we get like Paul. That is that we understand where people are going. We understand why they are there. And we understand the fact of what can happen to their life. Let's think about Moses. Y'all ever heard of Moses before? Moses had a rod. Moses was a leader. Moses was... Man, Moses went to the Pharaoh and said, I just want to let you know something. God's coming. We're going to let these people go. And he said, no, Moses, that ain't going to happen. Moses stayed faithful to God. And Moses continued to follow God and watch all of the people he knew growing up go through plagues. He watched the people that he loved go through plagues. He watched the people that he loved lose, uh, lose loved ones to the angel of death that came in Egypt. He saw God deliver them. He watched as they went over the Red Sea as God just miraculously opened it up. He, he watched all these things take place. And Moses is leading the people of Israel. He's leading them through the wilderness. There's a place where God said, Moses, I love you. Thank you for being faithful, but I'm wiping them all out. He said, I'm done. Not putting up with them anymore. They're all going to die. Well, that would be encouraging, wouldn't it? That was a prayer meeting. I'll tell you how Moses loved them and had a burden for them. Here's Moses' prayer. Y'all ready? Moses said, God, wipe me out of the book and save all them. Whew. You ever thought about that, God? Man, I don't want that person to go to hell so much. So what Moses is saying, God, you just, you take me, you let me take their place, and you save all of them. You know why? Because he understood where they were going. The Apostle Paul, this is Romans chapter number 9, which is leading up to what he said right here in chapter number 10. And, and in chapter number 9, here's what Here's what Paul said, chapter number 9. I'm, let's just back up one, one scripture and read it. Chapter number 9 of, of Romans, chapter number, chapter number 9 and verse number 1. This is a couple verses of scripture. This is Paul. Again, we're under, trying to understand his burden. Understand, wow, look what is going on. Look in verse number 1. I say the truth in Christ. Did everybody find it? Chapter, <laughs> it was just one, one chapter back. Okay. <laughs> verse number 1 said, I say... The truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing, wit bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost that lives in you if you are born again. He is our witness. We found that out in chapter number 8. Where he said the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And Paul said that same Spirit's bearing witness with me. And so look what he said in verse number 2. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. I want to stop right here and say something. That is exactly 
what we are supposed to have about people that don't know Jesus. Yes, as a Christian, man, we're supposed to have joy. We do have joy. Amen. We're supposed to have, we're supposed to enjoy life. I mean, God said, I give it to you more abundantly. But we're also supposed to carry a burden. That burden is our underlying in our life that helps us to understand, God, there's a future for everybody. Look in verse number three. He said, for I could wish that myself were accursed. What's the next word? From Christ. Now, do y'all think Paul's happy about being saved? Man, he has, I mean, from the, from the road to, on, on his way to Damascus, he got saved. He has not quit talking about it yet. He's talked about it in front of kings. He's talking about it in front of governors. Boy, we need him today. Amen. And he, he's talked about it in front of everybody. Matter of fact, he has been so saved that he's just, I don't care if you take my life. Here I am. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. But look in this verse of scripture. Verse number three, he said, I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. For my brethren and my kinsmen according to the flesh. So what's Paul saying? Paul said, I want to see them saved so bad. I would give up what I got for them to be saved. That's a burden. I'm going to be honest with you, that's deep. That's only a place that verse number one can take you to by the Holy Spirit, by that place of realizing they are so lost that they will go to hell. And I love them so much. I had rather be there and away from Christ if it will save them. It's kind of like one of those things where you hear parents say, their child's sick or something, I would just, I'd take their place. Paul said, I want you to know I would take their place and be lost and be cut off from everything I know from eternal life if it would save them. That's a burden. Look what also he says in verse number 10. He said, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises who are, their father, who are the fathers and of, of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. So here's what Paul did. He said, I want, you, I want to let you know something. They know the truth. Paul said it's been handed to them. But they have chosen not to. To follow him. A true burden does not stop until it is answered or until it is lifted by the Holy Spirit. I do know in, in my time of being, being saved that there is a place of one person in my life where I understood this verse of scripture. God Never lifted that burden. It was for several years that I carried this burden. It was actually for my grandpa. It was an overwhelming burden. It was an every day, every second of the day burden. Now I remember a place, a prayer, where the Holy Spirit from, this like in chapter number 9, began to speak to me about his eternal salvation. In a, in a mighty way. I remember that burden. I remember that weight. Remember all those things. like Kind of like what Paul is talking about. And in that time of prayer. I've never had that happen before. And I'm not going to tell you all about it. It's, it's very personal. But I saw God do some things. In that place of prayer. It was in a basement of a church. That I don't even know if we have permission to be in. <laughs> But God kept that burden until he got saved. And he got saved. 82 years old and got saved by the grace of God. Amen. But I want to tell you, there's other times I've had burdens. And they were just lifted off. That burden was no longer. That's the scariest place you can ever be as a Christian. Because that burden's not there, is God dealing with that person? If that burden's not there, so what's going to keep us connected to prayer? Am I just going to pray for them because I got them on a list? Yes, we should pray for them, but what about that burden? 
carrying that weight. That's where Paul is. He is carrying that weight. So as a Christian, I want to ask y'all, do y'all think we should ask God for that kind of burden for people? Or God? Where we... Where sometimes we sit down at the table and can't eat because we're thinking, God, I want you to save them. God, I want you to do whatever it takes. That's what Paul's praying. God, do whatever it takes to save them. And the Bible goes on. And, and, and I want you to look in verse chapter number 10 again. I know it's a long way. Just flip one page. Chapter 10. I want you to see what Paul is saying. There, there's, there's, there's three verses of Scripture here from verse 2 down through verse number 4. Paul explains where they are. We see his burden as he's praying for them. But second, we see how they are broken. He is seeing what is wrong with them. He said in verse number two, he said, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. He said, I want to tell you, if you ask them, do you know God? They're going to say, oh, yeah. He, he, said, he said, if you go to them and, and you look at them, man, man, they've been to church. They've been to the synagogue. They go to the temple. They go when it's time. They walk through the tradition and the religion, but something's wrong. I remember when I went to Israel and we were on, we were on the plane. And I'm watching all these, all these guys that uh, they're, they're going to do their daily prayers. They're going to pray toward the east. And so... I mean, it didn't matter what was going on. It didn't matter how drunk they were. When it come time to pray, they got up. They didn't look at you. They just kind of walked over everybody, went to the back of the plane. Everybody turned in the same direction, and they began to pray. You know, there's a lot of people today who are walking through life with a zeal of God. They think that everything is okay. Well, here's what the Bible says. Look at it in verse number 2. He said, but not according to knowledge it's not something that they have experienced it's not something that they really understand they're just going through the motions wow verse number verse number three and verse number four lets us in on that a little more but we talk about verse number uh, verse number two they have a zeal uh, the, that word zeal means a fervent mind that word zeal means a fire even that word zeal means that they may even let you know how much God has, man, I know, my grandma, boy, she was a prayer warrior. That don't save you. They went to church all their life. That is not going to save you. And we're watching as he says, I want you to know, there's got to be knowledge. There's a form of godliness, but there is no power. They don't know why. They don't know what they're doing. and They don't know why they do it. They just do it. Up until March of 2020. Anybody ever, I'm, I'm sorry to even say 2020, amen? Guess what? There was a lot of people found in verse number two. They went to church because they've always went to church. They walked through things just because they've always done it. I'm going to tell you, our world has changed. Things have changed. If you are not in with a knowledge of, of salvation and of God, the Bible says and lets us know there's not going to be a continuation. There's a cutting line. There's a stopping point. There's a like, yeah, that's too deep for me. Yeah, I don't believe I want to get in on that. That is what is going on. Paul said, I want to tell you how, how they are. And, and we can read these verses of Scripture. Look in verse number 2. For they are they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Bible said in verse number two that they have a zeal for God. But in verse number three, he said they don't know how to get God's righteousness, how to be right with God. He said going about to establish their own righteousness, having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Can somebody, anybody know what the righteousness of God is? How do you get the righteousness of God? The blood of Jesus, it is a relationship with him. It is understanding they have not submitted themselves unto what God said and how God said that our lives are changed. And so he said, I want to tell you where they are. They're in that place that they are so broken. They walk through life, but they don't see the real need. You ever tried to wake somebody up that didn't want to be woke up? You ever in life tried to help somebody 
that really didn't want to be helped. They're just going to keep on doing what they're doing regardless of how much you try to help them. And so Paul said, here's where they are. They're going to keep on. They're going to hope that their doing good outweighs their doing bad. I want to let y'all in on something. Those scales always turn out the same when sin outweighs any good. And there's no way you can balance that scale except for the righteousness of God. And that only happens when you trust Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life. Look, look what he said in verse number four. Bible said in verse number four, for Christ is the end of the law. Hold on a minute. What did he say? Christ is the end of what? The law. He said the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So here's what he said. He said, I want to let you know something. You can do all the good. You can go and follow the Old Testament law. The Old Testament law, all it does is show us that we are a sinner and that we need a Savior. Do you know if you're following the Old Testament law, you ain't even going to eat any bacon. Y'all been eating bacon, ain't you? Did you know there's things that you would go through and you're like, yes, I've got to keep myself this way. The law was never intended to save anybody. The law is given so that we can see that we need a Savior. And so we understand, he said, it, was, it, it has ended. And now the righteousness comes when you believe in Jesus. There's something I want you to look at. And from verse number 5 all the way down to verse number, verse number 13 is the greatest scriptures you, you and I can ever grab a hold of to help us to understand that people need to be saved. Look at verse number, verse number 5. The Bible said, For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. So he said, we go back to Moses. Why does he keep doing that? Why does Paul keep doing that? I want to tell you why. Because that is what they were hanging on to. Oh, Moses was, he, he was our man of faith. Abraham, we're of the descendants of Abraham. We got this thing. We are good. He goes back to show them. Yeah, that's what Moses said. But you have to have faith to do what Moses did. Did. Look in verse number 6. He said, but the righteousness uh, which is of faith speak us on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring down Christ from above. So here's what he said. He said, I want to let you know something. It's not that you can take what you believe. You can go up and get Christ and bring him down and say, oh yeah, by the way, this is what you have to do. Look in verse number 7. He said, or who shall descend into the deep. That is to say to bring up Christ again from the dead. He said it has nothing to do with your laws that you are trying to keep to bring you to salvation. How many people do you know that you have a burden for or you've witnessed to? And when you start witnessing to them, they do exactly what the woman at the well did in John chapter number 4. Where she said, she found out, hey, oh, wait a minute, this is a prophet. She found out it was really Jesus. She said, oh, well, our fathers, they, they worshiped in the mountains. I've been to church. I'm, I, I've been to Sunday school. I mean, that's the first thing. Uh, Brother Mark was telling about a, a, a lady that he, 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 uh, he had witnessed to and, and, and just asked her, said, oh, you go to church? Oh, I, I live right across the road from the church. <laughs> Yeehaw. That don't save you. He didn't say, do you live across from the church? <laughs> So he said, I want to let you know something. It's not bringing up those things at your salvation. We're going to look at verse number 8 down through verse number 10. I'm going to read straight through those. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. I want to tell you, it's by faith. And it comes out of the word is how we get saved. This, here's the word of faith, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What's going to happen? You're going to get saved. He said, believe, trusting in what God did. The Bible said in verse number 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Has nothing to do with keeping the law. Had nothing to do with being religious. Had everything to do with trusting what Jesus did. 
And Paul said, I want you to know all these that I'm looking for, all these that I'm praying for, here is how their life is going to be changed. It is changed in Jesus, the true way of salvation. Look in verse number 11 and you see what he says. I love verse number 11 as much as I love verse number 13. For the scripture saith, whosoever, whosoever believeth on him shall not be what? Ashamed. He said, whoever believes on Jesus they're not going to be ashamed. He said, when you get saved, man, it changes you. And you want, to, uh, you, you want to lift up Jesus to everybody. And then he said in verse number 12, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Wow. They had to understand something, the ones that Paul is praying for, that Jesus is the Savior of the Jew and everybody else. Whoso Aren't you glad he's a whosoever? Amen. Then he says in verse number 13, look at it, or, or let me finish verse number 12. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him. Then he said in verse number 13, for whosoever, who? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. So Paul talked about them being saved, and then he tells us how that they are blinded, why they're not saved, and then he tells us how they can get saved, and that is calling upon the name of the Lord. His prayer was that all of them would come and be saved by there's a little word called believe. That word does not mean, yep, I think that's okay. Yes, I think that happened. That word does not mean, well, you know something, yep, my, all this, I believe that happened. That word believe means I am leaning upon, I'm placing my trust in Jesus so much that if he falls, I fall. I'm giving him my life and I'm trusting my sin. Like he said, I'm bringing it to him and saying, God, I believe you and I trust you. I want you to look at, the, uh, at, at this last thing that from, from the rest of this chapter. From verse number 14 all the way to verse number 21. But I, I want you to look, skip all the way down to verse number 21. So here's Paul. His prayer is that they would, that Israel would be what? Saved. And so whenever he, he calls on them, he, is, he has laid out the foundation of what salvation is. When you get to verse number 21, he said, but to Israel, he saith, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient. Gang saying people. He's a bount he is bountiful in mercy. God's a merciful God. Man, I think about the things that I did before I got saved, even in church. He's a merciful God. I think about stuff I've done since I've been saved. He's a merciful God. He is a God of mercy. Verse number 14 and 15. We go back to those scriptures. He said, here's, here's what you got to have. You got to have a, a, the message to come. Paul said, we got to pray for somebody to be sent for us to preach the message. He, he says it there in verse number 14. He said, how shall, they, how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And the Bible says in verse 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? He said, I want you to know something. I, Paul, am willing to be sent... To those who need to hear. I have a message that they need. The Bible says in verse 15. It is good tidings. Don't forget that everywhere you go. If you are a believer. You're carrying Jesus. You're carrying good tidings. You're carrying the message that they need. You're carrying that good news. Look in verse number 16. He said. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Why are they lost? They have not obeyed the gospel, not because of their sin or the kind of sin they have, not because of lifestyles they have chosen. The reason they are not born again is they have not believed the gospel. When you believe the gospel, he changes you. Amen. And then the Bible says in these verses of scripture, verse number 17, he says it like this in verse 17. He said, uh, uh, he said, so faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of of God. How are they going to get faith? By the word of God. They got to hear the word. They have to hear the word. How are they going to hear the word? Some of them will never step inside of a church. Some of them will never get online and listen to a message. Some of them will never want to go to a Bible study. 
They're going to hear the word through us personally as we share Jesus with those that we have a burden for. When they hear that word, that is the place that God begins to, he puts that seed in their life. That seed that can grow into faith when it's watered. Paul said it like this. He said, he said we got some that plant. He got, we got some polis. He, he watered, but it's God that gives the increase. God begins to work on it. We plant the seed by the word of God. The Bible says in verse number 18 that everybody's heard. Verse number 19 and 20, he, he said, I want you to know something. He said, they, they hear it, they know it. They, they first by Moses, then, then, uh, then Isaiah, he was very bold in the gospel. He gave them the word and they have all of that that they have zeal about. They've heard the word, they know. He said, they just need to trust in him. Where Isaiah, if you remember in Isaiah 53, he said, who has believed our Report who has believed the good news, who has believed that this is Jesus. I want you to look in chapter number 11. I love chapter 11 because in verse number 1, it just kind of goes along. You got to remember, whenever you read the Bible, it is broken into chapters to help us to see where we are. But it was written straight through just like a letter. And so Paul, in chapter number 11, he answers verse number 21. Bible says that God is reaching out to them all the time. He's not quit. He's, he, he's reaching out to a disobedient and people that, that talk against him and walk against him. But verse number, verse number 1 of chapter 11, I say then, God hath, cast, hath God cast away his people? Paul said, I got a burden for them. If you got a burden for them, I can promise you God has not cast them away. And if you got a burden for somebody, I want to tell you, God is on the other end knocking on the door. You can, you can mark it down. But here's what he said. God forbid. Here's the reason. Paul said, here's the reason why I know he can save them. God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham and of the tribe of Benjamin. What did Paul say? Paul said, I know God ain't give up on them. He can save me. There's hope. He can save them. Do you know if God can save you, he can save anybody. We were to the bottom of the bottom. When you realize that you're a sinner, you don't get any lower than being a sinner away from God. No matter what your life looked like, no matter how stained it may have been, no matter how sinful, or no matter how much it may not have had things practicing of sin in your life. When we see ourselves a sinner, we're on the bottom of the bottom. And boy, God can pick us up. Amen. Paul said, there's hope because he has picked me up. He can save them. Just remember that person you're praying for. No matter what it looks like, no matter what looks like going on around their life, if he can save you, it's a miracle and he can save them. Hallelujah. The Bible says, look in verse number 23 right quick of chapter 11. 23, he says, And they also, if they abide not still, or if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. He said, I want to let you know, there's room. <laughs> he said, For God is able to graft them in again. Here's what God has done with Israel. God has said, Israel, if you don't believe, we're going to go to the Gentiles. Does that mean that Israel cannot believe? No, it means that they have the same opportunity everybody else does. They've been cut off as God's chosen people in this hour. That they're not just receiving the gospel, but everybody is in this, in this dispensation, in this span of time that we're in. But in that, he said, if any of them get, want to get born again, they are grafted back into the family. Well, I'm glad God don't throw people away. Amen. Oh, and he said they're grafted in, that God is able. Look in verse number 26 as we close. The Bible said in verse 26, he said, And so all Israel shall be saved. Can I ask y'all a question? Do you think Paul is praying in faith? He started out in verse number 1 of chapter number 10 and said, God, my prayer is that all of Israel will be saved. He comes over to chapter number 11 after he's talked about salvation. He's talked about their future. He's talked about what's going to happen. He said, so all Israel can be saved because there is a deliverer. He's Jesus. And he's able to deliver them. I want to tell you, friend, that person that you have in your life that, you, that we're burdened over, that we're worried about, guess what? There's hope. Because if God can save me and you, he can save them. 
If God can answer prayer for us, God can answer prayer in their life. And that's what Paul says. Paul says God has brought them a deliverer. Verse number 20, he's talking about Jesus coming from them. Guess what? God's going to open their eyes. And I want to tell you all a little something. It ain't going to be long. God's going to let them see he's, he's the real Savior. And they're going to trust in who Jesus is, that he is the Messiah. Wow. That is about to take place. We need to understand people have a future. People that don't know Jesus have a future of hell. But they can have a future of a changed life. It may come through us being like the Apostle Paul, getting that burden. God would save them. I want to ask you tonight, maybe, maybe tonight you have never trusted Jesus. I want to tell you something. The Bible says that we just read through it. He said, I want to let you know how you, how you become a believer is that you know and you confess and you look and you understand that, hey, I am a sinner. I sinned against God and Jesus died for me on a cross. How many of you are glad that Jesus died on a cross? Amen. Amen. That he was buried. He took our place on a cross. He was buried. And the Bible says on the third day he arose. And then he said, when you believe that, you understand that. He said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, what an assurance to know that if I call on him, he'll save me. Just like Thomas seeing him, God, God give him that assurance in his life. God said, this is your assurance. So we got two things. If you don't know Jesus, it's a good day to trust in him. Amen. If he's speaking to your heart. But tonight as believers, the greatest thing we get from the word is we need to pray for people. We need to be a witness to people. We need to have a burden for people in our life. And trust God to save them. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, you are so good to us. And we just want to praise you. God, we want to thank you. And God, we just want to honor you. Lord, you're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. And you're the Savior of the world. Father, I pray, God, with everyone here, everyone that's watching tonight, Lord. God, if they don't know you as Savior, Lord, this will be the place and the hour. That right now, they'll, they'll, they'll call upon you, God. Bend their heart before you and say, Lord, here I am. Forgive me. Save me. Come into my life, Jesus. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And today, Lord, I receive your word that you'll save me. And God, I come for your salvation. And Lord, I pray, God, all of us who know you as, as Savior and Lord of our life. God, help us not to be so clouded with everything that's happening around us. And caught up in the whirlwind of all the things that are taking place in our world. To forget that you saved us so that we could be a witness to somebody else. God, may you place that person on our heart. Or those people. Or those family members. God, upon our heart in such a way that it becomes like Paul had. It becomes our heart's desire to see them saved. God, I pray, Lord, if we don't have somebody like that in our life, that you, through prayer, through the power of the Holy Spirit, will help us to know that person, have that person in our life, and continue to pray and trust you to save them until they get saved. God, Paul said, I know there's hope for them because you saved me. God, we know there's hope for them because of your salvation in our lives. God, I want to give you praise tonight for what you're going to do. God, help us as a, as a believer to carry the burden in such a way that people will come to know you. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. And God, we give you thanksgiving for answering prayer. We trust you and ask your will to be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. I want to encourage you. I uh, invite somebody. Pray. Hey, let's ask God. Give us somebody. Give us that person in our life, upon our heart, that burden like Paul had, that burden like Moses had. To believe God to save them. How many of you know he can? Amen. We're looking for God to do it. Amen. And uh, praise God for his goodness. All right. Well, good night. God bless you. If you brought children, please pick them up. Amen. Uh, you can pick up your children at the end. Uh, around the.